Tanzania, the largest country in East Africa and home to the Spice Island of Zanzibar. For the next two weeks, this East African gem will also be home to Birmingham's Aspire Sports Trust team. Led by project manager Daryl and accompanied by co-founder James, the team are travelling to the small village of Biuni, located in the region of Dar es Salaam. They're on a mission to help build the infrastructure of the local village school, discover a piece of Africa and learn more about themselves away from the distractions of home, family and friends as they embark on the fourth trip to bring Aspire to Africa. Okay, so as we're driving up to the school today, um, I was really excited because um, I haven't been here since October. And in October we did some really good work, we got some plumbing done, we got the water well plugged in, we got the electric plugged in. So it was the first time I got to see that in action, uh, but also um, getting to see all the kids again and the teachers again. And just the excitement was more about being back um, rather than it being new to me, which was good. Um, and I was really excited to see a couple of kids um, who got some presents to see if they're still there. Child over there who uh, got a soft spot for because he got hurt in one of our lessons a couple of years ago and hurt his knee and then you know he was here the year after and we, I gave him a, I gave him a gift for being at star of the of the week to ball and um, he wanted me to put my name on it because he said he wanted to, everyone to know it's from me so I've just seen him and I think he's still holding it so I'm gonna go see if he's still got it. Amici. That is, you've still got it. Uh, how's your knee? Okay. So walking up to the school today was a bit weird because I had absolutely no idea what to expect. Kind of seeing comic relief and things like that. Um, and that's about the only exposure I had to that sort of thing. So we got there and uh, it was really strange to see like, the football pitch being just the main main centre of attention. It was, the school had been built around this football pitch, it seemed to me. But, um, but driving there, yeah, it was, it was kind of really exciting. I was, I was nervous to see how the kids were. Like, I'd heard glowing reviews of how happy they always are and how enthusiastic they are. But it was, uh, I, I knew it was going to be like, well, I knew it was going to be different to that. But I didn't know how. My first impressions of school when I arrived were you just saw loads of kids like outside of the coach waving at you and I don't know, like, I was just what surprised me was just how just happy they all looked, excited to, that we were there and they all just looked so busy to be at school and that shocked me in a way because in the UK you just I don't know, like people get excited for school but I've never seen so many children look so happy all at once. When I got there, the impressions were how small the school is compared to schools in England or schools all over the country, most of the country. How small the school is, and they've only got like four classrooms, and we've got like loads of classrooms. Too much. We've got. We've, we are. We take things for granted. When you get there, you realise how lucky I was when I was younger to have classrooms with working whiteboards, working everything, resources and everything, so really looking to be fair. The rest of the trip I feel really excited for because I know the other guys are going to have a really good time and they're really going to develop as people. Uh, from a personal point of view, um, I feel uh, excited for the work that we're going to be doing at the school. There's refurbishments going on at the teachers' houses, which again, I'm um, making sure that the work is done right. So when we do it throughout this trip, um, the, the lessons are going to be even better. Um, the skills we're going to give them is even more. Um, the experience for our guys is going to be great. Their development is going to be great. The children are going to have such an amazing time. And I get to oversee all that and I get to witness all of that. And for me, that's brilliant. 
um, as well as making sure that the refurbishment is going on and making sure everything is ready for when we leave um, when we come back next year. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the trip because I really think this could be the best trip we've ever done. The Spice of Africa project was started to give something back to local communities in Africa to improve the lives and the, uh, of the young children that live out here using sport as a vehicle. It also enhances the ability of the employees for Aspire as well by taking them out of their comfort zone, raising money, working as a team to get to get the project in place but also come out here in different conditions. Our role has been to go into the school, um, we've delivered some classroom based lessons. We have. And we've done some PE lessons. She's right. I think the main challenge, and it's probably the same for everybody else, is the, the language barrier. Um, some of the children understand limited English, so you could say certain words, um, and they may be able to get the other children to do what you want them to do. So we'd have to use a lot of animated like, expressions miming. and miming yeah. and showing them and doing demonstrations. But it's really fascinating to see that once they understand understand what you want them to do, uh, they, ju they just crack on with it and and just look like they're having the best time ever. So the next bit is a bit more tricky. You need to work out the area of the triangle. Now do you remember that an area of the triangle is this, but all divided by two, like we showed you with the paper, two triangles make one rectangle. So one triangle makes half a rectangle. So looking at this triangle here, does anybody think they know what the area of this bit of the trapeza is? Don't speak any Swahili, but I've learned one or two words. Um, that uh, The kids don't really speak any English either. Um, and although the teachers speak both English and Swahili, um, when you're trying to, you almost have to teach your lesson to the teachers so that they can then explain it to the kids. But it's like Chinese whispers that sometimes some of your instructions get um, lost in translation, quite literally. Um, but I think if you, the more you simplify down your lesson plans, the better the teachers and then the kids pick them up as well especially with the much much younger children who are in like kindergarten um, it's easier for them to pick up simple activities like playing catch than it is for them to pick up playing handball. Whilst the team continue to find ways to overcome the language barrier Co-founder James and team leader Daryl are keen to find out how well the school has been using their donated resources. That's quality, that. So when I opened this bag, what, ten months ago, it was full of these resources. And now, have you seen the displays? Yeah. I'm now putting work and displays on a wall, which is going to be challenging to do, which is good. Everything looks good, and judging by the empty bags, the school is clearly making good use of the sports resources. However, now it looks like there's another issue that Aspire needs to address. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is looking to be a, a, a continual project, really. So there's, there's always more that we can do. Um, the classrooms need to be continually improved. Uh, kindergarten and school currently uh, takes place outside, so we need to build a classroom as well. Um, continued improvements to the teachers' houses. Uh, we've got the first phase done. We're putting electricity in, um, but they, they still need to uh, continue. 
programme of improvement so we can keep retaining the teachers and, and bring in better teaching for the, for the children. We now need to, uh, to look at sending more resources and books over for grades 1, 2 and 3 and then from next year uh, grades 4, 5 and 6 having a new curriculum too so just to keep up with the changes in curriculum and send relevant resources and books takes more money, um, more time to organise the events so everything is uh, continually evolving uh, and we, and we keep aspiring to make more money which we can send back over here. Fundraising plays an essential part in the running of the Aspire to Africa project and each member of the team is vital in ensuring that enough money is raised to make the work in Biuni possible. In order to take part in the trip, each member of the team has to raise a target amount through their own efforts to help support the development of the project. It's a big task, but one nonetheless that is having a major impact on the children in Biuni. The small village of Biuni has a population just shy of 2,000 people and opportunities for the children growing up here are few and far between. Many children experience extreme levels of poverty and deprivation which have a direct effect on their educational development. Due to recent government legislation, both primary and secondary schooling here is now free. However, whilst most fees are covered, some indirect costs still remain such as school uniforms, books and learning materials. This puts a tremendous strain upon already struggling families, often resulting in child absenteeism, dropout increases and a reduction in grade progression. Children who fail to get a good education in Biuni are susceptible to a life of further poverty, prostitution and crime. By helping to subsidise resources and continually improving the teaching quality, the Aspire to Africa project aims to ensure that more children graduate from Biuni school year on year, making it possible for them to go on to secondary school and secure a more promising future. Hi, Asasa. Aspire to Africa is the first to help you to help you with your family. We have wametufundisha mbinu mbalimbali za ufundishaji darasani wametusaidia vitabu vya masomo mbalimbali vipatavyo vitabu vya masomo mbalimbali vitabu vinafikia 1600 alafu pia wametusaidia vifaa vingi sana vya kufundishia masomo mbalimbali During this first week the Aspire team have the task of teaching the teachers new lessons and techniques across a range of subjects the aim of this is to upskill the teachers and improve the quality of education the children are receiving. Sports apprentice Reese is stunned by just how much of a difference a little help makes. Um, so we're working with the year one and twos and we're trying to work on their, um, their number, so their recognition of like numbers. So if you're looking at that, they have to colour in an elephant, Elmer the elephant, a different colours based on what they can see is blue, yellow, pink, purple, orange and then they have to colour it in. I mean the teacher, the teachers themselves, they've done absolutely amazing with the class. They understood what I was saying and then they've just taken it under their own wing really. I've had a good help and the kids are absolutely loving it I think. From what I can tell, they're having a great time, yeah? Chini, 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 chini. Another team member hoping to make a difference is sports educator Dan, who's rapidly realising how much harder things are here than back at home. Is it difficult to run your lessons with such big groups? Yeah, it's much harder than uh, running oh, yeah, the One of the biggest Dan. disadvantages we've got as well is the language barrier, so because with the younger children they don't speak much English at all, so it's difficulty to communicate with them but also when you've got 40 to 45 children at the same time it becomes even harder and um, normally over in England we're used to groups of 30 as an absolute maximum and um, if we're doing active camps which is some of the activities we're doing this week we're used to 15 children at a time and um, so yeah it is quite difficult. 
How have you anticipated that when planning your lesson for today then? Um, so originally when we were coming out we, we planned a proper session as we would at home where we have different groups going on, we do progression, things like that. And then when we've got out here, it's a case of we've had to scrap that and completely change what we've been doing. It's good in a way because you've got to think on your feet to change it. But today it's going to be literally a case of we get the equipment out. It's probably something they've never done before. So we're just going to have a bit of a play with the equipment and show them how to use it and just give them an extra thing to use outside outside of school. So it's just one more one more skill they can learn, one more activity that they can play with their friends. How do you do that? Squeeze it. Is it? Oh, my God. Sawa? Sawa. Okay, off you go. Each of these sessions are only 10 minutes long, so to just to give them that little bit of an idea of what to do, but a different skill as well. I mean, we found the children over here are much more creative than the children at home. Um, they have to be, in a way, because they, they make things, they, they cook and clean at home, they, they have to survive on their minimum. So they have to be creative. So when we've given them equipment, they've used them for lots of things. I saw somebody yesterday using a frisbee as a dish to get water. So by doing this, it's quite good. It just gives them one extra little thing. Classroom sizes at Buyuna School range between 60 up to 100 children per class, making learning for the children a real challenge here due to the shortage in teachers. So what happened to the class? So this class, for example, only had 50, 20, uh. but the class at the top has got 110. So what, what could happen? Uh, this is because this school right now it is improving after the support. Mm -hmm. So many, many parents they used to, to, to send their pupils here to start. That's why uh, previously mm -hmm. uh, we used to have, to, to, to have a, 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 a few numbers of pupils. But right now because we have different services here, you see we have water and have a, a good toilet there. So many parents they used to send their pupils here. So that's why the, uh, at standard one there, standard two, we have we have, we have many pupils. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're finding because more positive things are being implemented in the school, yeah. you're having more people come over, come in. Yeah. But then it's creating a little bit of a negative because you haven't got the room and the teachers. Yes, yes. Uh, so so we found that the, the negativity comes to the side of teachers mm -hmm. because the pupils are increasing in, in, in number. Uh, teachers are the same in number. James, one of the big things our, the team are noticing is that there aren't enough teachers to the ratio of children. Is that one of the Spire's aims going forward? Yeah, I think some classes at the minute have up to 100, 100 pupils in it per teacher. So it's like over three times as many as what we'd have in England. So definitely one of the aims is for, or two of the aims will be for, to build more classrooms and have more teachers working here. And then we can, we can get the children in school uh, for longer than a few hours. Um, and in, in better ratios of teachers. How, do, how does it impact their education, do you think, having such big classrooms? Uh, it's difficult for teachers then to work with each individual child, so it's very much done on a whole class basis. So they all learn at the same speed and, and the same stuff, whereas in England it would differentiate to the, to the needs of the children. So very difficult to, to teach a, a group of 100 children. All the teachers at the school live on site and some move miles away from their hometowns, friends and family in order to make a living. It's no surprise then that in recent years the turnover of teachers has been rapid due to the poor living conditions they were faced with on site. Open roofs, no electricity and no water made teaching here nigh impossible. However, in an effort to solve the problem, the Aspire to Africa project pledged to build three new houses and refurb all the teachers' homes in order to support the infrastructure of the school. The ones that they put in, the ones that we put in, go on the national grid. But at 7 o'clock, let me sound last night, 7 o'clock, the electric goes off, it's blackout. So it didn't really fix the problem. All these electrics, once they're in and done, are solar powered. So which means they can plan, which means they can mark, yeah. which they never been able to do before. Mm. So. As development work continues on the teachers' homes, James is keen to find out just how much of a difference the Aspire project is making to the lives of the teachers. George, how long have you worked at the school? Uh, I've been here for 10 years. Okay, and what was the school like before Aspire started the project? Uh, of course it was in, in, in bad condition, you know, uh, our, sh our, our houses there was in bad condition, but we thank you uh, Aspires, you are trying to, to, to support us uh, to 
to make our house be good, you know. Uh, our houses was in bad condition. You see the, the, the windows were not made there to, to avoid mosquito nets. Uh, even uh, they, 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 they didn't have the roof, you see. They didn't have roof. Uh, I found that uh, even uh, dangerous uh, animals or like I can say uh, birds, dangerous birds were entering in our house there. They, they get, we get feces in, 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 in our house so we found that sometimes they, 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 you get uh, the mood of working go down. It's clear that the Aspire project is making a real difference to the lives of the teachers. But they're not the only ones. Refurbishment on the teachers' homes means jobs for local workers. Local workers like Femi. Hey, can you ask him if it wasn't for the Aspire Sports Trust and the projects we're doing here, what work he would be doing? Mimi has young was not the Shasana from the land. And you are only four quarters to render from the same amount. His job much it's a carpentry, it's like making furniture. Yeah, that is his work, big work which he did here. So if we didn't come get a job here, it means he can make a furniture somewhere. Uh and compa and as the kiss made a young man and now in China. He said that uh, yeah, it's good for him to get this job here because also the man which will get it here, it will help him to get the, uh, some basic need which he wanted. Yeah. What do the local village think of the project you're doing? Uh, for me, no, 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 yeah. 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 For me, no, no. He said that yeah, uh, for him, he thinks that this is good, but he don't know for the others because they can't talk on behalf of others. Yeah. But personally, he said that this is good things which you did. Aspire has been working tirelessly to develop the infrastructure here in order for the school to become self-sustainable. It's required a lot of support from back home and also here on the ground and so far it's been a journey with some remarkable results. Results that project worker Salim has seen Aspire achieve year after year. Uh, before the first time when you came here, it was like, the tank it was a small one here. It was 404,000 litres and they aspire they bought the tank of 5,000 litres and they do the plumbing from this area here to the toilet over there and also they do the plumbing inside of the toilet now the toilet is working before there was just a building without water but now they have water inside of the toilet and also the electricity when you come here first time, the classroom there is no electricity. So the spire, they do, they put the electricity inside of the classrooms. Now the light is working. Even the teachers' houses now it's working. Yeah. Well, before we even go in, you can <laughs> smell what they're like. Uh, which you never capture on the camera, but there yeah, the smell is uh, horrific to say the least. Not the most appealing of toilets for the children to use or for anyone, to be honest. So yeah, this is the old, uh, the old block. As you, as you see as well, there's flies around in there. Best description for these sort of toilets are brickwork with a hole in the floor where children get to go to use the, the toilets. The words don't really describe how, uh, how bad they are. One of the key differences between the old block and the new block is that these, this block, toilet block is built on basically a bigger cesspit. So any waste is just stored under the ground and, and, it, and it's held there really. Whereas our new toilet block um, has got the pipe work plumbed in so companies come and uh, extract the waste rather than leave it just lying here. As you can see here, this is a, this is a new block. We've got a urinal area there. And typical toilets for, for in Africa, where they're set into the floor, where they're ceramic rather than just a hole in the floor, and running water, so they can wash their hands afterwards. In the old block, they didn't have that. And there's no smell in here, it's all very fresh. A lot has been achieved. 
However, one of the biggest achievements to date has been the improvement in the school's academic performance. An improvement that head teacher Amiri is keen to tell James all about. This is a certificate to, that is what you call the, the speech. To think as far as what ah, is okay. yeah. of the United Kingdom. It's a speech, speech that they made to, to the guys last time when they first came in, in 2015. And just confirming how many teachers, pupils, classrooms, uh, information about the school and the ward, what textbooks, what we've done with the children. It's, uh, it's unbelievable really how far the school's come and the impacts that the trust has had. So there's 346 pupils in the school. And then to hear that they've gone from in the top of what, from about 100 to number nine on the league tables and that many more children getting, getting into secondary school is unbelievable really. The success of the Aspire to Africa project's investment in the teaching and academic quality of the school has been phenomenal. Within three short years, the school has rocketed from being ranked between numbers 72 and 100 on the league table to now being in position number nine. Nasema kwamba huu ni mtihani wa taifa ambao tutakuwa na baraza la mitihani ya taifa la Tanzania ambapo ni matokeo ya mtihani wa darasa la 7 mwaka jana 2016 ambapo tulikuwa na wanafunzi 52 kwa hiyo hii karatasi hapa ndio inahusika na hii na hii matokeo haya katika shule zenye wanafunzi zaidi ya 40 kundi la wanafunzi ni zaidi ya 40 watoto 40 kiwilaya wilaya Temeke tulikuwa walikuwa ni wanafwe ni shule 31 lakini si tulishika namba 9 katika matokeo haya kiwilaya Bishop Vesey School in Birmingham has played a major role year on year in helping to raise funds for the developments here this is the first year Bishop Vesey students Megan Zach Lauren and Izzy have joined the Aspire team on the trip and have been able to see firsthand the impact their fundraising has had. There's like a board on the wall down there and it says all of the children, I think it's in their last year, and they have to kind of perform at a certain level in all their subjects to get a C, which will get them to secondary school. And I think when they started, only five out of the 40 made it to secondary school and now five, I think about four don't. So it's a complete turnaround. Like, they get, like children are given the opportunity to go on to secondary education, which is opening up so many more doors for them, which previously they wouldn't have had available to them. So, if, even if you just look at that little statistic, you can understand how huge like education is for this village and for all these kids. So. And for my lesson the other day, I asked them to get their pens and pencils out, and none of them had any. But then I was able to go and get some from our from what we've we've donated and provide all of them with pens and pencils. So that's just something that's been yeah. completely added. You take, you take things like that for granted, like resources. And yeah, like, I just presume they would have that and they don't. They don't, don't. and like Aspire, I can't imagine what it would have been like before. But Aspire literally just opened doors for their, for their education and for the quality that they get. And it's honestly, it's amazing to see the impact they have in that way. One of those children enjoying the positive benefits of the Aspire to Africa project is 13-year-old Majuma, who walks seven kilometers every day to and from school in the hope of a brighter future. Shule yetu imeendelea. Tumepata vifaa vya michezo, nyumba za alimu kutengenezwa, umeme darasani, vioo, mabomba. Nikimaliza shule nataka niwe mwalimu. Ni muhimu kupata elimu kwa sababu itanisaidia mimi na wazazi wangu. It's the end of week 1. And while there's still work to be done on the teachers' houses, the team are looking forward to a much needed break on their Tanzanian safari. <laughs>
Okay, Ella, send yours. Matt, Matt, come to Dan. Over there. Dan! It's week two, and with co-founder James having headed home early, project manager Daryl has the task of coordinating the team to finish work on the teachers' houses and play in the community football match. So how are the team getting on? Great. Um, I thought it might be <coughs> not difficult, but there's a lot of people, a lot of different characters, a lot of different um, personalities. But you see during the day and then even in the downtime, everyone's getting on, um, people are integrating. I was so talking to someone last night about how in this environment you can put two people together who you never would put together and they would just get on and they are. Um, there's been no arguments, there's been no concerns, there's been no disputes. Um, I've tried to manage it in a way that allows them to take control of what they're, they're delivering rather than me telling them what to do because I think that's the best way to get stuff out of people um, and then all of them have risen to the challenge there's not one person lagging behind there's not one person slacking um, and I'm really really proud of them to be honest with you they're really doing really well so it's good this trip I mean I think it's helped everyone and a lot to connect on a lot of levels like managers with apprentices and managers with staff that they've not really had conversations with or you massively a lot of people are going to have spoken about you but I think it, you've come out your shell massively as a quiet person in the office a quiet person on the plane and the trip that we've been on and everything you having the chance to communicate with people and uh, I don't know just actually be yourself around everyone and feel comfortable You've come on a long way, so I think your confidence definitely is come on, I think. Through this trip you just you can't without doing it, you don't know how much you're gonna improve. But as soon as you at the end of it, you have, you have sit back and you think, I couldn't do this before, like this trip, or I couldn't do that. And you you I know Daryl wouldn't accept it, but you you sit back and go, Thanks, thank you Daryl. because um, this experience is you'd never get nothing better than this again. The refurbishment of the teachers' houses is complete. So now it's time for the Aspire team to get to work. It's time for the big reveal, and science teacher Jasper Luca, who's been a teacher at Buyuni School since 2007, is excited to see just how much progress Aspire has made on his newly refurbished home. Whoa! Yeah, my house was looking good now. So I appreciate, I would like to thank you, thank you for Aspire to renovate my house by painting a new color in my house by putting a ceiling and install the system of electric so this time I'll be comfortable in my house this time and I put new doors and floor so I'm so proud for that yeah With work finally complete on the teachers' houses, it's time for Aspire's last order of business, the community football match.
camera. Yeah, it's Daryl. I like shout, out to, shout out to Daryl. Um, two great assists, or one great assist especially. They call me Javi. Yeah. Ben, how you feeling? I'm nervous. You get it, anything? This is quite hot. And you run for 10 metres, and it's like you're sitting on the sun. It's horrible. But all good fun. Just the water. Same. Very more the water for everyone. Water. And the cheerleading. Sorry. I can have a water bath for you Tell us about the match so far. I think we're winning 2 1, but they've just scored, so the boys don't look too happy. But I think we should have to hold on to it. Good side, like, we're going to win this. Basically, the international game in Tanzania. 3-3. Three, three. Are you proud of the team? No, no I'm not. No. Yeah, it's hard, really hot. I don't, I've never played in anything like it, man. It was the atmosphere better than playing at home? Oh yeah, definitely. All well, the kids are singing, it's really good. Uh, not everyone in the village is here as well. It's obviously good. Yeah, it's been really good. I just sit down now. Now, now, we are leaving soon. So we want to say thank you for the last two weeks. How do I sum up? I think major success. I think this is my third proper trip, fourth time here. And it's been amazing. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's mixed emotion. I'm, I'm sad because it's, it's, it's coming to an end. I'm happy because of what we've achieved. I'm proud because of what I've done. Um, mixture really, but overall really, really happy. I think it's given me a chance to grow as a person um, and just a chance to mingle with people that I wouldn't normally mingle with maybe, um, as well as putting myself in a completely different setting work-wise or with the children I, I tend to work with. Um, so just hearing different people's points of view and stuff like that, and it's really helped me grow as a person. And as I say, I can take things away from this and go home and maybe implement those things back home. So when I go back to England, I'd like to, uh, uh, after reflecting on what we've done here, I'd like to change a few things. Um, I probably won't take things for granted as much anymore in England. like especially when it comes to money like often when i get to the end of the month after being paid um i'm always moaning oh, i can't go out this weekend because i'm skinned or i can't do this because i'm going to money um, i've learned that whilst i'm over here that money is not everything it's experiences are far better i don't think i've ever had a moment where i wished i wasn't here it's been life-changing as these things always are it's given you a nice outtake on life like we came the saturday after results day it's really nice not to have to think about any of the stress of uni or anything. You can just sit and take kind of day by day, minute by minute, rather than thinking too far ahead in the future. Um, like I was saying to someone earlier, like they haven't got much, but they're happy with it. And that sort of makes me quite envious. Because they're really happy and sort of enjoying life without really having that much. Um, and we're at home, we sort of worry about, I don't know, supermarkets ran out of something. I know we walk around with our face on um, for the rest of the day. But everyone you see through town and stuff, you know they haven't got very little, but they're still really happy and really sort of full of life. The one aim that I had when I come here was not to be so sensitive. And just remember that, <laughs> like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Has anyone else cried yet? <laughs> so I'm so grateful I got the opportunity to come on this trip because it's definitely a, a memory forever. Um, for another apprentice back home, um, 
What would you say to them to encourage them to go to do it? I would 100% tell them to go on this trip. Any opportunities they get, I would tell them go on it, take it, because it's a mind blowing experience. It's an eye opener. You get to actually see what's behind the scenes and what actually goes on in the children's lives. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to say it. I it's the feeling that you have. It's not what you can say, it's the feeling that you have. I'm really looking forward to like the next chapter going to university and bringing everything I've learned into the way that I live my life, so yeah. If you could sum this trip up in one word, what would it be? Amazing. Life-changing. Unbelievable. Yeah, I said it earlier, eye opening. I'd want to say life-changing. It's not been life-changing in a bad way, it's been life-changing in a good way because of how happy everyone is and everyone's so friendly and they've got such a big community. We wouldn't have been here without all the schools and all the people that fundraise and supported us and put their money towards it, number one. So anyone who put money towards this trip, we clearly thankful. I need to make sure people understand how amazing this place is, how great this trip is, and how life-changing it is for everybody involved. This is my fourth time here and it's still changing my life. That's me doing. I'm a man, 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 I'm a